Adam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. It's 1995, and I am a, I'm serving as a part-time conference planner for a deliverance ministry out of Dallas. We had a visiting pastor from Zaire, Congo, who invited us to the t a 10 day full gospel first pan African convention in Zaire. The pastor was our guest and he promised to treat us well if we came to Africa. Right away I started packing. I didn't have a second, I, I never ever thought I wasn't going. My eight-year-old daughter talked me into going, so I bought her a ticket. I thought it would be a great idea to let her see how other people live. So the events of the trip. The evangelist I worked with was from, also from Zaire, and he was denied his visa. So now we're, we're going to have to travel alone. But I'm still packing. I don't care what happens. Many immunizations, but I'm still packing. At the L.A. airport, the American delegation awaited the arrival of the Alaskans, which were my daughter and myself. No one mentioned to me about being part of a delegation, but I'm still going. But the, the people at the airport had the same story. The evangelists invited them, too, and they were going. From L.A., we landed at a place called Libreville. The delegation from Gabon got on the plane and they started to sing and dance. I've never been in anything like it. Air France rocks when it lands <laughs> in Africa. These people were just singing and praising it. The whole trip, nobody told them to be quiet. They didn't serve wine and alcohol. We just dealt with it. When we landed, I noticed a few of the whites and some others were being taken by the guards at the end of the runway. Guards with machine guns. So I went over to the door and I peeked out. And I thought, oh no! Red carpet down the airplane stairs, two guys standing at the end with machine guns. <clears throat> And I thought, okay, now what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I ran to the restroom and I pulled out my African dress. <laughs> I'm going to fit in. I'm going to fit in somehow. So I dropped it over my head. <laughs> and I took my shirt off and wrapped it around my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so, <laughs> when it came my turn to leave, my daughter said, the sleeve is sticking out of your hat, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to the top of the stairs, and I thought, Garnet, stay behind me. Don't you say a word. I walked to the top of the stairs and I threw my head back like I was the queen of Africa. <laughs> and I walked down the stairs. <laughs> when I got to the guards, I said, <laughs> and I thought, I'll be in a dilemma if this man does not show up. Out of the crowd steps the pastor. I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, that was, the well, that was the beginning of something really, really special. Now we are the American delegation, 25 total. There were, there were also, there was also a delegation from Indonesia, Taiwan, France, Switzerland, Germany, and Pan Africa. We were driven to the People's Palace in Zaire. And when we arrived at the palace, they made an announcement that the American delegation had arrived. The American delegation? I didn't even know I was part of, of a delegation. However, the people stood. They applauded. They walked us in and gave us special seating. It was humbling because most of these people had walked for days to get to this Congress. 
to this meeting. About 5,000 people had gathered at the, at the People's Palace in Zaire. And half that many more could not even get in the building. Music is everywhere in the background in the motherland. I said, it sounds like Caribbean music. And they said, oh no, no. Caribbean music sounds like Congolese music. Everything comes out of here. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> At a key service, the music stopped when a European delegate stepped on the stage. If you can imagine, this man had the nerve to walk up on the stage and just stand there. And everybody's praising and dancing, and it was as if we went into freeze mode. You know the, the game we play? <laughs> And he took the mic, they gave him the mic, and he said, we are standing in proxy for the rape of Africa. Suddenly, he wept. 5,000 people start weeping at one time. There was a wave of weeping that went through the entire, the entire auditorium. 5,000 people, and the way that they weep is, and that wave just went on and on and on and on. We cried, we cried, we cried. Next, an African man who was the, the conference planner knelt down and said, I'm asking you to forgive us for the years of hate. More weeping and wailing and weeping and it went on and on. The American pastor who was with us went on stage and he said, Africa, we forgive you for selling us into slavery. I cannot remember crying that hard and that long in my entire life. We wept, we wept, and we wept. It was as if rain was coming down from heaven and washing away a lot of the bitterness. It was like crystal clear water just rinsing through all of us that were there for the conference. Before I left Africa, I saw a vision, a cloud moving across the sky. It was one of the most beautiful white clouds I've ever seen. It was huge. The lining of the, the cloud was pink and silver, and it had bolts of lightning shooting out of it. Like an AH-64 attack helicopter with that force. It had the sound of a million foot soldiers in perfect syncopation. Africa will be saved. I don't care what it looks like now, but I saw the glory of God in Africa. I returned home, a home a new person. The spirit of rejection and racism and hate was broken off my life. Overwhelming joy. I dance anytime I feel like it because I learned to dance to joy. May I have this dance?